Hi, Shan, is that you finished now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to take you to Labour Suite and show you a typical birthing room. That'd be great, because I'm sure that's what mums will want to Absolutely. see. Absolutely. This is a, a very normal birth room, Shan, I'd like to show you. OK. So, as you can see, there's an awful lot of equipment. Some will be used and some mm. won't. And it does kind of depend on the risk factor of the lady's pregnancy. Okay. When a woman comes in an established labour, she will have one-to-one -one care with a midwife, and that's really, really important. OK. All the different equipment has different uses, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, when a woman is in labour, we need to monitor her condition and we need to monitor the baby's condition. Okay. Now, to monitor the baby, it depends um, if it's a low-risk pregnancy or a high-risk pregnancy. A lady with a low-risk pregnancy will have the baby monitoring done either with a pinard or with a handheld Doppler. And this is done every 15 minutes, so listening to see how the baby's heart rate is. And that's just to see if the baby's getting stressed by labour or not. If a lady has any complications of pregnancy or um, <coughs> medical complications, we'll use this um, cardiotograph machine, a CTG for short. And that's continuous monitoring. And it's normally two band bands around a lady's tummy. Okay? It lets us know how regular the contractions are and how the baby's heartbeat is doing in relation to the contractions. Okay. While this machine lets us know how regular the contractions are, we do need the midwife with her hand on the tummy to let us know how strong the contractions are. That's very yeah. important. Um, to monitor um, mum, um, she'll routinely have her um, temperature taken to make sure she's not getting a high fever. Um, she'll also have her blood pressure done uh, and her pulse, and that will be done regularly throughout labour. Now, obviously, um, monitoring of the mum and baby is a big part of labour, mm -hmm. but the important part of labour is um, having effective contractions and the baby being able to move down the birth canal and out into the world. So to help that, a really good bit of equipment is something that will make the mum be in the best position to help that. So um, these birth balls are fantastic. So every room will have a birth ball. Um, we would strongly advise that women do not lie in the bed. Okay, we, we want women to be upright so that the baby will turn to the front down the birth canal and be born. This bean bag's really, really good. We can use it in lots of ways. Okay. Um, we may have um, a mat on the floor, so mum may decide to be kneeling on the floor, um, leaning forward on mm -hmm. the mat. She might choose that she would rather be on the bed and do it, so we can put the bed down and have the bean bag on the bed. But a really good position is to move this onto the bed and mum lean over. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are really, really, although they look very <coughs> non-tech, mm -hmm. they're actually really important bits of equipment. Now, all these pieces of equipment are um, to help baby be born vaginally, successfully. Mm -hmm. However, some babies need a little bit of help. I'd like to show you this piece of equipment, which is called a resuscitator, and it's quite scary looking. But when you mm -hmm. break it down into its component parts, it's not at all. There's a heater that helps us keep the baby warm, there's also a light, which will let us see what we're doing. There's uh, oxygen in case baby needs some facial oxygen. Um, sometimes babies can be a wee bit blue and oxygen will just make them go nice and pink. And suction in case the baby has got any blood clots or meconium down its airway um, so it can be removed. Most babies um, will just get dried off and handed to mum after that. Some babies have to go to the special care baby unit. Dorothy, how long should mums expect to be in labour? Generally, you can expect um, from established labour, a first labour will be sort of 12 to 24 hours. Um, a lady who's had a baby before is generally a good bit quicker than that. So during labour, Dorothy, I expect there are lots of phone calls from friends and family wanting to know what's going on. All uh, staff acknowledge that uh, labour and birth is such an important time for the family. Um, however, repeated phone calls from the outside world um, disrupt the work of labour ward. What's more important is it disrupts the hormonal level of the woman. The woman needs um, to be able to sink into herself and concentrate and let her natural hormones work so she'll have an effect of labour. That's why um, we don't have visiting in labour ward as well. It's not because of any old draconian law. It's because uh, we want the woman to have an effect of labour. 
And also, um, obviously, the more visitors in and out introduce infection, and that's something we're very uh, keen to avoid as well. That seems like common sense, Dorothy. Now, how will the midwife monitor the progress in labour? How does she know things are moving along? There are many ways the midwife can know that labour is progressing. Towards the end of the first stage, um, the midwife will notice that the woman's behaviours change. Um, another way is by abdominal palpation. Um, the midwife will feel that the baby's head is going deeper into the pelvis and that the baby's rotating round to the front. And the third way that most folk are aware of is by doing a vaginal examination. That, ha that is a regular examination that happens, maybe every four hours. The midwife is checking that um, the cervix, the neck of the womb, is opening so that the, the head can come through. She's also checking the position of the baby's head because babies rotate round so the back of their head is, is up at the top and she can feel that. That's an important sign. And the other really important sign is the baby's head's descending through the pelvis. So there's three key components that the midwife looks for in a vaginal examination. And all these things together um, lets us know that, that the labour's progressing well. Dorothy, could you just take us through some of the coping mechanisms that mums might want to use whilst they're in labour? Certainly. A big help for coping is mobility. It's moving about and changing position. The last thing uh, a woman in labour wants to be is on her back. Um, it stops the baby descending properly and it can increase backache. Um, so the more she has a leaning forward position, the better. It, and it also gives her a sense that she's in control. Um, Warm water, uh, a warm bath is re really, really helpful, particularly in the early stages of labour. Some women will access hypnobirthing classes, some women will access aromatherapy, some women also uh, access a TENS machine. Now a TENS machine, it's just four pads that go on the back and it provides uh, electrical stimulation to the nerves at the back and it can be very, very helpful and it sees an awful lot of women through the early stages of labour up until quite far advanced but the, the knack of it is to put it on as soon as your contractions start. Coming into hospital, um, to the maternity unit, we can offer women uh, gas and air, um, which is very, very helpful. You have to breathe that every contraction, and it takes five good breaths to build up in the bloodstream so it works. So a couple of wee sooks doesn't work. You have to keep doing it. Some women find that they manage the whole labour with that, but some women find they get quite tired with that. We can also uh, offer an intramuscular injection um, which helps dull the contractions um, and make you not mind quite so much but it can make you feel a wee bit sleepy and it must be mentioned that it can um, affect the baby and make it a wee bit sleepy once it's born as well. Epidurals are provided in all the consultant-led units within Greater Glasgow and Clyde and it's a 24-hour service. However, please note that if the, there's an emergency and the anaesthetist's in theatre, you may have to wait in a queue. Dorothy, we're not actually going to show a birth, but what would happen after the baby's born? Well, after the baby's born, um, the most important thing is that the midwife will check. She'll have a quick glance that the baby's OK, and then baby will be put on skin to skin onto the mum's chest. Baby will be dried off, put towels over it, still skin to skin against mum and a wee hat on and that is to keep baby as uh, warm as possible. The skin to skin is really important for a new baby. Um, what it does is it can listen to the mum's heartbeat. Um, it ha helps calm the baby down. It regulates the baby's heartbeat. It's very, very important um, for bonding as well. So that is something that we aim to do for at least one hour. But obviously the mum's uh, still got her afterbirth um, to birth. Mum will have a big contraction and that's when the midwife knows that the afterbirth has come away from the wall of the uterus and the placenta will be delivered. After a time, the umbilical cord will be clamped and cut. Now, um, the midwife will offer um, that either the mum clamps and cut the cord or her partner or a birth partner. Uh, it's just a symbolic gesture. Um, it doesn't have to. If they don't want to do it, they don't have to. And the midwife will clamp and cut the cord. Some uh, women like to look and see what sex the baby is herself. Uh, some want the staff to tell. Nowadays, most women know what sex of baby they're having. There's still some couples who don't want, so it's very important to them 
that uh, the midwife gets it right and doesn't blurt out what they're having until she's discovered herself, and that, that's important. It is policy within Greater Glasgow and Clyde that uh, babies receive an injection of vitamin K. Vitamin K is important uh, for blood clotting. As well as a uh, vitamin K injection, other routine things that happen, um, the baby will uh, have identity bracelets put on, one in each ankle. It's very, very important that we have correct identification of the baby. It's also important in case the baby's needing any medication. And obviously, another big question, the first thing people ask after the sex, what weights the baby? The baby will be weighed before going up to the postnatal ward. Obviously, it's a time of great excitement. It's lovely, um, lovely to witness for us, but it's so special um, for mum and dad and the birth partner. We'll do um, observations on the mum and baby, like taking the temperature, we'll check mum's blood pressure just to make sure she's all right. Regularly the midwife will check um, mum's tummy to make sure that her womb is nice and contracted so that she's not bleeding too much. After that, um, if she requires any stitches, um, that will be done. Mum will be offered a light snack. Um, and then when she's fit and skin to skin is complete, um, mum um, can either have a shower or a bath and then she'll be transferred up um, to the postnatal ward. We don't um, bath the baby in labour ward before going to the postnatal ward because as I said, it's so important to keep the baby nice and warm. Uh, bathing comes later. So Dorothy, we've spent some time looking around the birthing room here and this is where most mums will birth their babies. However, for some mums they will require to have a caesarean section in theatre. Yes, I'll take you to see theatre now. So I'd like to show you a typical theatre now, Sharon. Uh, and theatres are clinical, they, they look scary, but it's not. It's just a big room with a lot of equipment in it and uh, a lot of people who are there to help you have your baby safely. Um, there's lots of reasons um, to be in theatre. Um, generally it is for a caesarean section. Now you can either have an elective caesarean section and that could be because the baby's breech or you've had a previous section and chosen to have another one or it could be um, because um, something's happened during labour that has shown that you need a section. It could be that the baby's become distressed with labour or it could be that the baby's in the wrong position to be born vaginally and that's reason for section. Okay, so that's theatre. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Nikki to let her show you around the CMU. OK, that'd be great. Thank you. So this is our pool room. It's a really lovely room. Heat and light can be adapted to suit the woman's needs. And as in any labour room, she can bring her own music. This is our private space for birthing, so we encourage women to make it their own. The use of water in labour is really effective. It helps women cope with contractions and is really relaxing too. The water also supports women to be in the best possible position for birth and helps her move around easily. It's also really good when used with gas and air. We have many water births and the midwives are really impressed with how effective the pool is. So Nikki, how do mums choose where to have their baby? At the booking appointment, women are risk assessed and offered home, community midwife unit or labour suite birth. Obviously she can change her mind at any time or her risk factors may change during pregnancy. She should discuss her place of birth with her midwife and write her thoughts in our birth plan in our handheld notes. All women who are low risk are automatically eligible for a CMU birth. All other women will be considered and advised on an individual basis. Women are encouraged to be active during labour, moving around a lot. Why is that? Being active is really proven to help the progress of labour. It is effective contractions and we encourage our women to move around in labour. Um, in this room we have many different equipment that will aid in active labour. We have the ballet bars which we encourage women to, in the lean forward position, open their hips wide and encourage the baby to come round and down. We also have the birthing ball and the bean bag. What this does is it aids the baby coming round and down into a good position for birth. We also have the birthing mat which we can pull out and put the bean bag on which encourages good positioning for baby as well. In the CMU, we monitor the baby's heartbeat every 15 minutes, which allows mum to be mobile as she's not attached to a monitor for the length of her labour. The midwife will encourage mum to achieve the most optimal positions for labour and birth. However, obviously when mum needs a rest, she will be encouraged to do that too. As you can tell, labour is an energetic activity requiring lots of stamina. Therefore, we provide our mums with isotonic drinks and light diet during their labour. It's important that they don't become dehydrated because the body needs calories to labour efficiently. 
So I'm now going to hand you over to our colleagues over in postnatal area. Thank you, Nikki. That's been really informative. Thank you.